Hey guys, how's it going? It's Etanius here. Welcome to episode number 24 of this NHL 22 Newfoundland Growlers Draft the Glory franchise mode here on my channel. If you guys have missed episodes up to this point, head up into the top corner. If you enjoy this one, show your support down below by dropping a like, subscribing, and hitting notifications to never miss when I upload. So today we get into the 2035-36 season. It's going to be a bit of a strange one coming up here. I mean, obviously, Dundas looks like an absolute unit of a pick, but we are not going to get the opportunity to draft him, most likely. There's a lot of interesting-looking players in here. I have no idea how good or bad a lot of them are going to be. We're still waiting on quite a bit of scouting, and, well, we'll just have to wait and see, you know, how this draft turns out. So in today's episode, we're just going to get through a season sim. We're not really going to focus on it too much. I accidentally simmed the first game, but like Gustavo O'Neill got off to a great start. Three assists in a 4-2 win against Washington, and the team's off on the right foot. And hopefully, you know, we can try to defend um, the most recent seasons we've been having as far as, you know, quite a few first place finishes here. We had a 119 point season last year. It was just everything went really well, apart from, of course, our team in the AHL, the Halifax Huskies getting knocked out in the Calder Cup finals. That one kind of stung, but that happens. Keep an eye on guys like Pavel Fregon and uh, even guys like Wale and Grand Pierre. You know, we should be seeing some decent growth this year from the system. Again, Bertuzzi and Deschamplain should both be very good players as well. We'll keep an eye on them, but I'm expecting pretty big things out of the system here this year. So, with that in mind, um, looking at the remainder of our kind of team's progress reports to start off here, we don't have too many crazy, crazy franchise guys in this team. Obviously, Catton is like our best player there, but looking at just overall potential, our best players, most of them are in the system already. Keep an eye on Medvinov and Wilford, um, but apart from that, not really a lot of guys besides maybe Glenn Cross, who we could see shoot up here quickly. Uh, a lot of them are okay players, but we'll have to just wait and see what happens here with their growth and development. Sutter is another name we really should be paying attention to, but again, we'll see if he develops. If he doesn't, then he's definitely getting brought into the system next year, but yeah, the team's in pretty good shape. I think we will see um, another good season out of this team, but Overall, should be a good year, so I'll be back with you guys at the end of this 2035-36 season, and we'll see where the Growlers end up. Alright guys, so this year the Newfoundland Growlers put up a 57-21-4 record for a second place finish, 72 point percentage, which is pretty decent. Um, not our best season ever, but up there. And the Winnipeg Jets just had an insane year being carried by Israel Jung and just really an insane forward core. So, yeah, they had a really good season. They've got some of our ex-players on that team too. And looking at the scoring, you can see Fantilli scored 105 points for our team. We got a 91-point season out of Sergei Kazevnikov, so he had a great year as well. And especially being on the contract he's on, that is totally worth the money. Uh, Catton had 89 points, so a bit of a drop-off from last year, but not really that bad. Still a good season from him. He's just under that point-per-game pace right now, and I'm sure he'll catch that next season or two. Apart from that, Josiah Carpenter had a good year, 88 points. Um, not really near that point-per-game pace, but he's still been good. Same with Connor Geeky, um, 79 points, a little bit of a drop-off, but not much. Sawyer Clem had a great year, putting up 76 points. He's got 137 in 164. Uh, don't get me or or don't be surprised if he actually starts growing even further. If his skating can, you know, just improve a little bit, he's really a great playmaker, and I would not be surprised if he hits 90 overall pretty soon. But apart from that, Solomon Edwards also took off this year, putting up a 74 point season after being in the mid 40s and like pushing the 50s, early 60s kind of uh, in point production. He just exploded this year, had a great year, and is up to an 89 overall. He's one of the best playmakers on this team. And uh, yeah, just a very good season from him. Nicholson, Delmore, all the rest of these guys starting at Nicholson did not have great productive years, but that's okay because the team still did very well. Vorobiov won 44 games this year. Pretty much the highest, that, that is the highest he's ever won is 44. He just can't seem to break that number. Uh, so that's interesting as to why he can't. 
Fairchild was good, and yeah, for our rookies there, Smiths and Svedberg tied for 26 each. All right, so looking at the entire league here this year, Israel Young would put up 110 points at just 22 years old. This guy is an absolute beast. Um, yeah, just that, that explains it right there. You look at his stat line, he's just been phenomenal throughout the beginning of his career. Over a point per game, he is very easily a great franchise player. And how about Damian Rankin? 71 goals on the season for 105 points. He just, again, absolutely took off. Oh, man. What a what a player. What a pick. Uh, 2031. Who did we draft? We got Agostino. So, yeah, we didn't have a shot at Rankin, but that's okay because he is, he is something else. He's a crazy productive player. Fantilli finished fourth in scoring. Bobby Brink finished fifth as a 34-year-old. 70 assists is pretty impressive too and yeah this Winnipeg line was just they were good there was no doubt about that Jason Morrow yeah he is still producing at 33 years old just an insane player there as well um lots of really good players throughout this league here how about Kiviaru 92 points as a 30 year old that's insane like this guy is just about a point per game pace as a defenseman He's going to be a Hall of Fame defenseman, we know that, and he was easily the top scoring defenseman. He should win the Rocket yet again this year, but we'll see what happens, but really overall, just, <laughs> that's just insane. So, as far as goalies go, Kelly Mahler would actually top Sergei Vorobyov, or sorry, Yuri Vorobyov this year uh, with 47 wins. He's been just getting better and better. And apart from that, you know, Olison, of course, of course, uh, Winnipeg's goalie is up there too. Rookie skaters this year, Ali Paul, oh my god, he's up to a 90 already. That's insane, oh my god, he's, yeah, he's gonna be a beast. How about Aiden Graves looking really good too? Lots of goals from those two. Um, apart from that, not too many other really top-end picks here in the top end of this, uh, yeah, like Landon McCult, 42 points, nothing crazy. Same with Osgood. Yeah, I don't know. I just, there weren't really too many crazy productive players, but still some really good players throughout. Um, so yeah, that is your league. That is the NHL. And how did our junior team, or our junior, our minors team do? Doesn't look like anybody's really in the top end here for scoring. So let's go check them out. All right, so Grayson Verdino put up 79 points, not terrible. Um, apart from that, 60 points from Grand Pierre is a really good season. And yeah, not too, too much else. Wale, not great. Okay, we're seeing some growth, but again, not as much as I was really hoping for. I wanted to see better growth than that. And that just doesn't look like it's going to be the case here. <sighs> So yeah, that's a little unfortunate, but that's just, you know, that's the way things are sometimes. So how about McDonough up to an 82? He's been having some serious years down in the minors here. He's been really good. And goaltending wise, Bertuzzi 137, Deschamplain 117. All right, not crazy, but not bad. And yeah, the rookies really weren't that great, unfortunately, so... Bure will keep an eye on. I don't know if he's actually going to make the league. I would love if he did, but we'll see. And as far as AHL scoring goes this year, Quint scored 96 points of the 20-year-old. That's insane. Um, McKee as well, both on... Oh, no, well, I thought they were both on Bridgeport. I was mistaken, but yeah, lots of good high-scoring players here this year. This is, yeah, this is actually just insane. Who's, like, really good out of these guys? Nobody really, like, Gortz is, yeah, okay, Jesper Gortz is a pretty good player. He'll be um, a decent piece for Vegas. Stasiak was okay, but again, 27 years old, he's not really young. Marshall Summers was decent, 82 points. So, yeah, that is your league, holy Colton Brophy. Yeah, he had a good year. Your best goalie was McEachern. Um, I think he's actually been in there before, Kazanov. <laughs> Yeah, that's one of our old goalies. He's in there. Ottinger as well. Oh, man. Good name goalies here this year. And yeah, Brophy was the best. We didn't have, well, Grampy was mildly in that conversation. But again, nothing crazy there. 
And all right, that is, yeah, holy, Quint was a rookie. Dang, he just jumps in the league, puts up 96 points after playing for Cape Breton. That's insane. All right, so there you have it. That is your leagues. Um, Halifax still won 53 games, finished top of their division, and fifth place in the league. Pretty decent season there from the Huskies, too. All right, guys, so as we jump into the postseason, it is very likely that we'll be playing either Boston or some team along those lines, and we are indeed going to be taking on the Boston Bruins. Okay, so here's the matchups. We're looking at Boston, Newfoundland, Toronto, Florida, New York, uh, Rangers, and the Canadians, and Islanders, Capitals. For the West, we've got the Kings and Wild, uh, Kraken and Canucks, Jets and Stars, and... Uh, Blackhawks versus the Blues. So, looking at this Boston Bruins lineup, obviously they've got the rookie sensation in Ali Paul. They've got him playing alongside Connor McDavid, so that probably helps. As McDavid, who looked like he was decreasing and declining, now actually has an 81 point season beside. Jeez, that's just. That's insane. You put Ali Paul beside McDavid, and it's just an insane insane season for those two so we're gonna have to watch out for those guys they're both obviously very talented uh Kisikov had a decent year too I think he yeah he had 96 points so he was really good um Jack Parrott is kind of their best player there on their team uh Stromberg's a very good defender as well but looking through the rest of this you know I think we've got a pretty decent chance in round one anyways uh Mark Curry We'll see how well he does, but yeah, that's the team we're going up against. Uh, Nikolishin, yeah, not one of ours. I thought he was for some reason, but it is what it is. Uh, as far as Halifax goes, they'll be taking on the Marlies. We're not so worried about that, um, but we'll see what happens here, obviously, as you know, both teams have had decent success. We've had quite a few championships. We've got five in the NHL, one in the minors, so obviously a minor success would be nice, but... We'll see what happens still. All right, so here we go. Game one against the Bruins. We win 5-4, and we also win 2-1 against the Marlies. Off to a good start. We lose game two in the minors. We lose game two. All right, game three. We're up 2-1 to one in game three in the minors. We are also up 2-1. to one. All right, game four. We go up 3-1. Adam Vantilli's having a year. And all right, we beat Toronto 3-1 there. Byron Borowski, three points in four games. And in game five here, we indeed eliminate the Bruins. Oh my god, Berkeley Catton, 12 points, 11 assists in just five games, and we just dominate the Bruins. It, it wasn't close, and we're one of the first teams, apart from Chicago, to go through. Um, looks like most of the minors are done here, apart from Providence Hershey and uh, Pacific Palm Spring, Iowa. So... All right, so let's advance a little bit further here. The playoffs should wrap up for the AHL, yep. And we'll be taking on Cleveland in the second round there. All right, so advancing a couple more days and we start... Oh, okay, the NHL playoffs are done too. So we will be taking on the Toronto Maple Leafs as they knock out the Florida Panthers. And as far as Toronto goes, they were able to beat Florida 4-1 to as well. We didn't have any... Ser oh, no, we had one series between Winnipeg and Dallas go to 7. But apart from that pretty um decisive first round so guys heading into round two here and this is the Leafs lineup we're looking at um overall yeah they're pretty good they're not crazy they've got a really good first and second line their defense is actually pretty strong and okay their goaltending is okay too so they it's not really surprising they made it this far I do just wonder how much better was the Florida team that they just beat and pfft, I mean, in my opinion, it looks like the Florida team they just beat was pretty stacked. So, yeah, Austin Matthews is there. A um, bunch of really good players. Yeah. The, okay, we're going to we're gonna have to be careful with this uh, Toronto team because if they could knock out a team like Florida, then they could very easily knock out a team like us. So, we got the Miners still going on too. Whoops, hit the wrong button. All right. And starting off game one in Cleveland, we win 4-1. Good start games one and two in the NHL and AHL 
and we win 4-1 there, and we win 6-1 there. Okay, I get the screenshots uploaded. Okay, so into game two here against Toronto, and we want to win both on home ice, of course, and we do indeed. Berkeley Catton's having a playoff, so oh my god. Okay, so um, yeah, 7-2 win there. We take a 2-0 demanding lead in both series. All right, into game three of the minors, and we're up 3-0. Uh, that one wasn't really close either, 4-1. And into game three of the NHL playoffs, and we lose 7-3. All right, that was a little pathetic, and we got to do better than that. All right, into game four, do we complete the sweep against Cleveland? Yes, we do. 3-1 to one win there. None of those games were even close. So into game number four here, we want to go up 3-1 to one against Toronto. Obviously, a 2-2 series uh, just invites disaster, but game number four, we win 6-3. to three. Berkeley Catton is two points per game in the playoffs. And just crushing it right now. So into game five, we can potentially eliminate the Toronto Maple Leafs here. And first period down 2-1. Second period still down 2-1. Let's see if we can jump in and win this one in game five. So here we go. Superstar, six minutes. You guys know the drill. Jesus Christ, play the... Dude, what are you doing? <sighs> All right, well, that was just pathetic. I... Vorobyov played the puck the wrong way. He almost let the puck get scored on by himself, so he's not starting next game now after that 4-1 loss, so... That's, that's all I have to say after watching that. That was just ridiculously sad, so... <laughs> Okay, get out of here. You're done for a game, Yuri. Figure it out. Get your head out of your ass. All right, this one should be a pretty easily simulated win here, but start off down 2-1 again, down 4-3. Oh my god, we are choking this series, and I'm not even surprised because our team's just playing like a bunch of goofs. All right, here goes Fantilli walking in. Beautiful feed. Oh my god, that was sexy. But Adam Fantilli's just a beast in this game. So, whew, what a goal. What a setup. Connor Geeky literally has a cross crease tap in, and we are tied up here. But my god, what a play it was by Fantilli. Makes the deke, forehand, backhand pass. It's just, it's literally just a tap in for Geeky. So, 4 4 game. Let's get it. I feel like we could still win this one. All right, Havlak, what are you doing there, buddy? I know you're good, but you're really not that good. Oh, cool, cool, cool. Yeah, come on, man. What is that? That's such bad defending. I don't even understand it. Like, holy shit, that was bad. All right, well, we're down 5-4 just like that because why wouldn't we be? don't like how fucking little support we have here. Come on, boys. Make a play where you're actually supporting the player carrying the puck. Um, what the hell are my defensemen doing? Seriously. What on earth did I just watch? Like, I get it, O'Neal rushed the puck, but where the hell is Morozov? I'm sorry, but, like, that was just inexcusable. That is such a bad play to create a breakaway out of literally nothing. All you gotta do is stay back on that play. And instead, nope. So, yeah, our third line defenders are gonna be getting a lot more playtime here after that because O'Neal and uh, Morozov are just done. All right, Edwards, come on, man. Like, hit the puck. Not just the defender's stick. Seriously? That went in? How? What the hell, dude? This is Superstar for you, and this is a crack Toronto Maple Leafs team that literally isn't even that good. Cool. Okay. Well, let's try to actually score here now, because this is just stupid. Oh, yes. Right. Cool. Cool. 
Did we really just give up three goals just like that? Jesus fucking Christ, man. Alright, Catton. There it is. 7-5 game now. Holy crap, this is just the messiest hockey game I've played in a long time. Like, no defense, no real skill, honestly. I mean, no, the skill's actually been pretty good. I can't fault our team or Toronto for that. Both teams have been playing quite skillfully, but the defense is the exact opposite. Oh, yes, just right into cop stalls again. Great. All right, take off, Kazevnikov. Sergey Kazevnikov, man, like, how do you cut that off? You literally let him walk right into there, and you're not going to, like... Dude, what are you doing? Come on, cop stalls. Take off, geeky. Skate, buddy. Holy Jesus, can you have any more players back on one play? Thank you for not letting me switch to O'Neal to step up on the play or anything. Yeah, that makes too much sense. Take a penalty. Jesus Christ, if you're going to play man-to-man -man that freaking close, you're going to get called on hooks and interferences and holds. This is just stupid. What is that pass? Make a drop, man. Make a drop pass. Do you not know how to do that? Obviously not. My God. Morozov through traffic, geeky right there, bury it, boys. All right, here goes Svedberg. Svedberg, oh man, you gotta bury that. What? How? How do you know to play that that quickly? Right, here goes Svedberg, Matt Svedberg. Oh, come on. All right, Delmore walking in. Oh, my God, call a fucking trip or hook or something, man. What the fuck did I just watch there? Honest to fucking God. Like, seriously, that's not a penalty. That is a penalty all day if I'm making that play. Here comes Catton again. Berkeley Catton, great chance. Oh, come on. What is that? All right, here goes Carpenter. Beautiful pass. Fantilli can't quite land the shot. Yeah, you fucking hold that. Fuck me, man. I can't believe we got ourselves into this game like this. We're literally tied up 4-4 and give up three straight goals. That's so bad. All right, face off here. Delmore through traffic. How does Pasquale see that? I don't get it, man. I literally don't get it. Oh, my God. Literally, like, our top two players in Fantilli and Catton are leading the playoffs. All right, Edwards going to lose it this time. Beautiful. That's exactly what I wanted. Oh, come on. Fucking full attack. All right, Gordy Draper walks in and scores. All right, 24 seconds left. We're not done just yet. Gordy Draper gets the goal. All right. You never know. I mean, it's probably too little too late, but, like, this is a one-goal game now all of a sudden. <sighs> Come on, boys. Let's do something here. All right, good start. Oh, beautiful pass into Draper again. Gordy Draper. Oh, man, if he got the hat trick right there, I would have just been so happy. But, hey, we won the faceoff, and we're in the right end. So let's keep it going here, boys. Let's keep it going.
right. Face off here. Catton wins it back to Delmore. You got to be kidding me, Coronado. He's just going to get this thing all the way down the ice. All right, Carpenter into Catton. Berkeley Catton. Oh, man. That was a great chance. All right, and we lose by one goal in what was, you know, actually a pretty close game by the end of it, but it really wasn't. Like, we outshot them 34 to 20, 27, and they get seven goals on us, man. Oh, that's bad. That's so, so bad. All right, we lose two in a row. What could have been a five-game series is now a seven. And all right, LA's through and four. Islanders are through and five. We better freaking win this game. This has just been too many letdowns here. So, first period, 2-2 game of game seven. All right, not great, honestly, from the Drowlers to start off. Second period, 3-2, hold the lead. Play defense, boys. Here we go, come on. Whew. This is this is just too close for my liking. It's literally a one-shot game. Power play Toronto does not convert. Power play Newfoundland doesn't convert. Oh, man, we're struggling here to just... Oh, I don't like how close this game is, but we hold on. Just barely hold on and beat the Toronto Maple Leafs 4-3. to three. I did not enjoy how close that series was despite being up what seemed like an astronomical amount. So, does the number one seed Winnipeg Jets go through? No, they do not. Chicago knocks them out. The Chicago Blackhawks just knocked out the Winnipeg Jets, and Winnipeg was fully loaded. Oh my goodness, what just happened? I thought for sure that was going to go the other way, but nope. Hartman and Cooley, wow. That's all it took, hey? Hartman and Cooley beat this team, essentially. Wow, I mean, oh, don't get me wrong, actually. That is, yeah. That is a really, really nice... Chicago Blackhawks defensive team. My goodness. Yeah. Um, okay, never mind. Never mind. All right, so we will be taking on the New York Islanders next. And here's how the Isles lineup looks. Defense is, you know, about average. Forwards, okay. Uh, they put Bennett Osgood on the first line, which is questionable at best. But they have really built a solid system here in New York. My goodness. Jose McCarron or Jose McCarron, however you say it. Played Vic Parsons. Yeah, they Okay. Alright. They got they got a good team on their hands. I won't even deny that. And as far as LA and Chicago go, you just saw Chicago's lineup. Here's the LA Kings. We know how good this team is. We faced them. Was it last year? It was indeed last year we faced LA in the finals. So they've got one hell of a team on their hands. We know how good they can be. And, uh, yeah, we just uh, got to hope Chicago could potentially beat them. So there you have it. That is the L.A. team that will be taking on the Chicago Blackhawks. But we get the New York Islanders here. So Hartford's up next for the um, for the Halifax Huskies. That should be an interesting one as well. And I just want to see what were the other playoff scores here in the AHL. So obviously we'll be taking on the Wolfpack. Abbotsford in seven and Chicago in seven. All right. All right, so as both our teams advance further towards the finals here, this should be interesting um, for the remainder of the playoffs, but let's get to it. So starting things off, Hartford and Halifax, 6 nothing loss. Wow, that was just sad. All right, Islanders and Growlers, we win 7-3. to three. Berkeley Catton's having a year. And we lose again there, 4-2. to two. Really not a good start on away ice there. Oh, and I totally just sim game two, and we won 3-2 uh, versus 1-1 one, one tie there. All right. All right, not too bad, but the AHL's struggling right now. And we get a 2-1 to one OT win there. Robinson McDonough, point per game. All right, into game three against the Islanders, and we lose 6-4 on away ice. I mean, hey, if you're on home ice advantage, that makes sense. Game number four here in the minors. We either go down 3-1 or we tie it up 2-2 like we just did. All right, 4-1 victory there. That's good. Can we go up 3-1 against the Islanders here in the playoffs? Yes, we can. Beautiful. That's what we like to see. 5-4 OT win. That's clutch, and we're one win away from the finals. Abbotsford goes through super easily. All right, and in game five here, 
of the AHL playoffs, we'd go down 3-2. All right, so that's not great, but it is what it is. All right, so into game number five here, and this could be it. Well, it could be it in the minors here if we're eliminated, but first period, 1-1. One, one. Second period, 2-1 Halifax, 3-3. Three, three. Oh, boy. All right, I'm going to jump in and just see if we can survive another game, but who knows. Face off here, gonna go to Wolski this time. Borowski looking for a play. Over to Karanen. Karanen over to Borowski. It's right there. Oh my god, how did that not go in? Alright, Karanen over to Wale. Over to Borowski. Teen one up. Good try there. Oh my god, talk about a bouncing puck. Oh, you gotta take that one, boys. Alamaki knocked off the puck. Here goes Wolski. Francisco Wolski, beautiful pass to Verdino. What a save. Right in front, and Karen and finds it back post. Let's go. We're still in it. Halifax survives Hartford for another day. We got outshot brutally, but Verdino's three assists gets it done. Let's go. All right. Whew. That was a, that was a close one, but game five here against the Islanders. Are we going through to the Cup Finals? Starting off 3-3. Very high-scoring game here on just 19 shots. All right. Second period. 5-4 Islanders lead. Let's jump in and see if we can tie this one up. Catton's up to a 95. He's killing it right now. All right, so two very good teams going at it here. The Islanders with the lead on away ice. Can they hold it, or will the Growlers be able to jump back into this one? Oh, that's a terrible pass. <laughs> Pantilli and Geeky in the top three for goal scoring. That's what you like to see from your playoff performers. All right, Catton here on the faceoff. He's going to lose it. Oh, boy. Okay. Let's please clear that. Fantilli, all oh, beautiful move, just didn't quite pan out. Oh, Fantilli right in front. Very good maneuverability. And Fantilli to the front of the net, can't quite find it. It's too bad, because it was really a good chance. Bourgeois. Are, are you going to let go of the puck, or are you just going to keep interfering here? All right, Catton. Oh, God, come on, McCarran. Fuck me. I literally turned the other way and passed it, and that didn't come off. How's that for fucking interference, man? Come on. All right, Carpenter walks in. Fire the shot, buddy. Osgood crushed on the play. Beautiful. Look at that. What is that? That is such a premature stick lift. Oh, right into the middle. Delmore almost gets that shot off. All right, Catton right out in front. Berkeley Catton scores his seventh of the playoffs and ties this one up. That's just a very nice goal. And all right, we're back in it here. 5-5 five, five game. Catton just snipes it. That's what we like to see. All right. Not a bad start here. And uh, four minutes in, we're tied up 5-5. Five, five. All right, Geeky loses the face off there but gets the poke. Oh, what is that? Nice freaking weak-ass penalty. My god. Talk about a dive. I literally can't go a period unpenalized. It just never happens, apparently. So, yeesh. All right, face-off here. Going to go back to Geeky. O'Neal's going to wrap this around to Petrov. And Petrov's gone. Mafe Petrov looking to get the inside edge. Almost jams it in short side, but can't quite do it. Koivinen, nice try there, buddy. Dietz knocked off the puck, and Geeky's in on a breakaway. Connor Geeky, forehand, backhand. It's in behind, and is this a goal? Is this not a goal? I couldn't tell. The ref was swiping his arms like it was no goal, but that was just chaos in front. What happened? Geeky gets in with Big Rig, obviously, yeah. 
but he's in forehand backhand goes through the legs off the post and the goalie kicks it in his own net oh my god sure kick that into his own net getting back up oh my goodness all right six five on one of the most ridiculous goals i've seen in a long time and we'll take it all right solomon edwards just getting absolutely sandwiched there all right bone byram oh my god are you gonna call a charge on that oh nicholson got crossed over there yeah taylor nicholson just about got burned that could have been a really nice goal if they scored it, but... Alright, let's just keep killing this one off. Alright, we got our solid PK unit out here. Geeky loses it, though one-timer was close, but not quite close enough. Nicholson, you fire this one down on net. Actually a pretty decent shot there. But now Bourgeois coming down. He's knocked off the puck. Petrov cannot make the pass. I was trying to go backhand over to Geeky. Oh, really good poke check there, though. All right, Nicholson just going to send this one all the way down the ice. That's where we need it. It's back in there, and... All right, McCarron to Bourgeois. Oh, good pass into Torgerson. Yeah, that was just a big defensive breakdown. We're not covering them. I don't know why we're not covering the middle of the ice. Like, our team just... <sighs> Quick breakout. I, I just don't get it. Yeah, I just... I don't get it. O'Neal over to Kazevnikov. Sergei Kazevnikov cuts back. Looking for a play. Rebound. Geeky couldn't bury it. Oh, it's... Dude, nobody, like, stops facing the boards and perfectly backs up full speed. That doesn't happen. Oh, my God. 12 seconds left. I'm done. I'm done. I literally can't do this anymore, man. We outshot them 42 to 26. I can't. I just can't. When we're on the attack for 17 and a half minutes and we don't win, what the hell, man? This Islanders team is cracked. Seriously, we actually lost that? Just, just sim them in six. I don't even care. Go on, get out of here, Islanders. You're done. Okay, OT, sure. I can score one goal on you before you score one goal on me. That's fair. But, honest to God. <laughs> I got, I got nothing else left in the tank with this team, and they scored 12 seconds left. They easily would have lost an OT, so the fact that we're going to OT now in Game 6 means they're going to lose. Alright, goodbye Islanders, I'm saying it now. Oh, what a play, what a play. Solomon Edwards, oh my god, what a goal! What a shorthanded play! No way that worked! No! <laughs> I saw Edwards cutting down the side with speed, and I'm like, I can't make that pass. There's two guys in between him, but if I send it right down the middle, it might just bounce. And it bounced perfectly, and Edwards gets the bounce off the pad on the rebound. Whew, what a goal. What a series winning goal. Who made that pass, by the way? Like, I want to see that again. That was, whew, what a game in New York. On the PK, we get it done. Why wouldn't you grab the Prince of Wales trophy? In my opinion, the superstition there just doesn't make sense. But, oh my god, we get it done. Let me see that goal again. We outshoot him 51-41. to 41, But who makes it? Ashton Delmore. Just a perfect, perfectly placed bounce pass. Too far for the goalie to come out. Bounces just into the middle. Edwards has Pearson beat. Makes the cut off of the goalie's stick and somehow manages to pull it back. Oh, that's so nice. Such a nice finish. All right, we beat the Islanders in six games, but my God, that was uh, that was something else. All right, so we will be either taking on LA or Chicago. If we play LA, it's a repeat of last year. Oh my God, did I just... No, oh my God, I just simmed game seven, and we won 5-4. I totally did not realize that, but we win in seven games against... Oh my god. That was, what what? What just happened there? Alright, in Abbotsford, Colorado. Looks like uh Abbotsford will go on here. 
I don't know who they beat. Must have been Chicago. Yeah, they beat Chicago. Oh, they swept Chicago. Yeesh, okay. We got two really good teams here then. Um, Abbotsford and Halifax taking on one another in the finals. I don't know how we made it to the finals in both goes here. But we did. All right. Also, something else I wanted to show you guys here um, was just Berkeley Cat and just growing like crazy. He's up to a 95 now at 30 years old. Like, that doesn't happen very often for a 30 year old to grow that much. But apart from that, Vigier, Nugent Hopkins up to his 77 is actually really good. Um, yeah, some system players actually took off better than I was expecting here. So that looks good. Sutter's up to a 78. Didn't do anything like stupid crazy. 49 and 69. That's it's okay. Um, but yeah, all right. Let's uh, let's get to this. We got Abbotsford in the finals here, and they're they're one hell of a team. But we will be taking on the Chicago Blackhawks as they are able to indeed beat the LA Kings in seven games. All right. So yeah, it's nice to have a new challenge, not play the exact same team every time, but let's see how these finals go, and uh, yeah, should be a good one here. So, starting things off in the AHL, we lose 3-1, not a great start. In the NHL and AHL for game one and two, we win 4-2 and 2-1. Beautiful. All right. Game two of the NHL, Stanley Cup finals, we lose 5-3. Chicago's one hell of a team. All right. Game three in the AHL, we win 4-0. All right. That's clutch. That's clutch. Game three of the Stanley Cup playoffs. We lose 4-2. Not good. Not good at all. All right. Game number four in the Calder Cup. We win 5-2. That one's pretty much wrapped up. But we need a win here in game number four of the Stanley Cup finals. And we get it. 5-3. Beautiful. Adam Fantilli, 27 points in 22 games. He's got 18 goals. 18. That's crazy. He's playing so well. Meanwhile, Katten has barely scored here recently, so that's not great. But, yeah, Kazevnikov is just, he's having a hell of a year. Clem's having a hell of a year. Such a high amount of good players here this year. I love to see it. But, yeah, wow, okay. Let's uh, let's keep going here. Tied up 2-2 apiece. Can the Halifax Huskies finish it off here? First period, 2 nothing. Second period, 4-1. And your Halifax Huskies are Calder Cup champions for the second time in just three years, I believe. Yeah, second time in three years. That is insane. That is so good. All right, so now we just got to win two games here against the Chicago Blackhawks. Game five, I'm just going to sim the whole thing. Let's see what happens. First period, one nothing, but from Connor Geeky. 2-2 two -two in the second period and into the third here. 3-2, Gustavo O'Neill, 4-2, Josiah Carpenter, let's go. All right, we've got this one in the bag here at this point. Oh, maybe not. Henriksen makes it 4-3, lots of time left. 5-3, Berkeley Catton, let's go. All right, I think, I think we're good. It's a very even game on shots, but that's about it. Apart from that, you know, things are looking pretty good here, and we will win game five, five to three. Beautiful. All right, so we have the edge now. Adam Fantilli, 29 points in just 23 games. All right, and here we go. Game number six for the Stanley Cup and a perfect season. We're up 3-2 to start off. Fantilli gets yet another goal. Second period, 4-3, Chicago comes back. All right, let's jump in, try to end this Stanley Cup Finals, but Chicago is playing so well right now. We're going to have to do our best. All right, so here we go. Third period underway at the United Center, and Chicago's going to win the draw. Here we go. There it is. Beautiful play. I could see the play just developing and two guys closing in on the net, and I'm like, Draper's wide open. That's going to be a goal. So we finally convert on the power play. It's a beautiful goal, as is. And all right, I think we got a good chance now here. But yeah, just defense is lacking. That's what happens when you're down a man and you commit to a hit. 
that's really what you have to just do is draw the physicality and find the open guy so and now we get caught Reichel back Petrov what are you doing there buddy oh come on Matt V come on Matt V what is that that's so bad with two minutes left he literally knocks the puck down himself and then just hands it to the other team. Goes, here you go. Go in and shoot. I'm not going to stop you. Like, fuck. All right. Face off here yet again. So there you have it. We lose 4-6 in. Oh, it should have been a five-game series. Again, man. We just keep doing this to ourselves. All right. I guess six, but now we're going to seven. Now we're going to seven. Are you kidding me? Oh, Chicago. I can't believe you done this. All right. First period, game seven, Stanley Cup Finals. We need this win. First period, 0-0. Zero, zero. Second period, 3-2. I swear to God, if they tie it up, this is way too close a game. Again, I am stressing out. 4-2, <laughs> let's go. Solomon Edwards, that's what we needed. Come on, boys, just hold it. Just hold it. 4-2, come on. Down to one minute. We'll jump in. And play here by Geeky. Svedberg. Oh my god, did you seriously just do shoot it around the boards? Are you kidding me right now, man? Seriously, why is Matt Svedberg even on the ice? He shouldn't be. But no, instead he decides his slap shot's gonna go off of Gustavo O'Neill instead of around the boards and out. Down for an icing or something. Like anything, man. Come on. All right, here goes Nicholson, Taylor Nicholson. Oh, okay, that's how we're playing. Get out of here already. That's not out. Oh my God, you guys did not just do that. All right, Nicholson's burying this one, especially after that hit. Good game, good night, Chicago. We're not doing that. Like, we're, we're just, no. Goodbye. Goodbye. Took us freaking seven games, but whew, we got it done. All right. Until he tacks on yet another point. And there you have it, boys. We get it done. Six. Stanley Cups in just what what are we looking at here six Stanley Cups in one two three four five six seven eight years six in eight years that's back to back year back to back gap back to back again my goodness this team is loaded I love how well we've done it's been Fantilli and Catton really those guys have been the main pieces for just sending us on the most ridiculous ridiculous playoff runs here but we get it done yet again that's two ahl championships six stanley cups and this growlers team is just rolling right now so wow just wow what a series what a playoff run in general like the team struggles their way through most of the playoffs we beat Boston in four, but then seven, six, and seven against the respective competition here. And who do you think is going to get it? I think it has to be Adam Fantilli, but we might be surprised with Catton here. So, no, nope, it is indeed Adam Fantilli. And he will indeed be getting his... How many... How many con smites is that now? He's got to have at least two. I'm just checking that for you guys here. All right, so we got one there. Kazevnikov got the last one. Before that, Fantilli got one, two. Carpenter got one. Berkeley Catton got one, and there you have it. Of course, Nicholson lifting the cup. Adam Fantilli 
is getting just his third con smite or second third yeah, fantilli Catton, carpenter fantilli yeah so it is his third and then kazetnikov fantilli all right so there you have it boys i mean you've seen the celebration before we all know what it's about but we'll just wrap it up there that's our sixth cup for this this series and this episode is going on long enough but my goodness we get it done and let's check out the award winners here obviously perfect season you love to see it and the awards are going to go to of course newfoundland winnipeg chicago newfoundland young wins the art ross as well as the heart kiviaru wins his third norris in a row fantilli gets the lady bing this year all right Ali Paul with the Calder, Adam Fantilli with the Con Smythe, Ulf Olsen, or Olsen with the Besna, and the Jennings. Interesting. Okay, he was like the third or fourth best goalie in the league. Lambos with the Masterton, Ovechkin, Ovechkin coaching Boston gets the Jack Adams. That's so cool. Jaeger wins three Selkies in a row. Young wins the Lindsay and Rankin wins the Rocket. But that is it for this one, guys. If you enjoyed, make sure to go down below, drop a like, subscribe, hit notifications to show your support, and of course, leave comments as well. But that is it for this one. I hope you guys enjoyed. This is Etanio signing out, and until next time.